Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. I, I just thinking about this feast. This feast is a time of reflection. Reflection about Yeshua. And the symbols of this feast represent what he did on Calvary. You know? And and as I, we, th we think about this feast, we're supposed to examine ourselves. And not only think about what he did for us on Calvary, but our approach to what he did for us on Calvary. And this message that I want to give is a message of warning about a, a way of approach that I would like to call the middle road approach. Okay? A trap that, I, like I said before, I would like to call the middle road approach. Okay? Now, when you hear the word or the term middle road, what do you think of? If you think of politics, you may think uh, that means someone is neither liberal or conservative. Right? They're in the middle. If you think of religion when it comes to the term middle of the road, you may think uh, the person is neither radical nor passive. If you are sitting here you know, today with a neck brace, uh, your um, arms and your legs are in a cast and you have your jaw wired, you may think the middle of a road is where you got hit by a Mack truck. But the middle of the road, what does it mean? To others, the middle of a road, it simply means I'll meet you halfway or I'll meet you in the middle. Okay? But in this passage, the middle of a road means the same as sitting on a fence. That's something or someone who uh, basically uh, not sure of itself, not sure enough of itself to go one way or the other. It is like a politician. Politicians don't want to lose their party, you know, when they're getting elected to the office, but they don't want to anger other parties too. They want to garnish all the votes they can, so they oftentimes will take the middle of the road. They'll say whatever they think you want to hear sometimes, you know, but at the same time they don't want to go too far because they don't want their party to lose them. But at the same time, they want to show that they have some flexibility on the other ways, you know, to opposing parties. And that might be safe ground for politicians. But is it safe ground for a Christian, a believer of Yahweh? I want to say that it's not. Okay? This is a compromising ground. This is the, the middle road is a road of compromise. For us, there should be no compromise. Let's turn to Revelation, chapter 3. Revelation, chapter 3. We'll start with uh, verse 14. Many of you guys are familiar with that. Somebody read that when you get a chance. We'll read 14 through 16. Nice and loud. Revelation chapter 3, 14 through 16. Wow. You hear that? He will spew you out of his mouth. He's talking about the middle road Christian right here. Okay? He says, You're neither warm nor you're hot, but you are lukewarm. You're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. So he's going to spew you out of his mouth. Now, let's think about some people who might want to, some Christians who might want to be a middle of the road believer. And some reasons why they might be want, want to be a middle of the road believer. First of all, we, we already defined that a, that a, a middle-of-the-road Christian is someone who is, who is not extreme about the relationship with Yeshua the Messiah. Neither are they completely um, insipid or, 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 what you say, uninvolved in their Christianity, their faith, or their religion. Okay? They don't... Uh, they take the middle road. In taking the middle road, they don't have to give their all to Yahweh. 
They don't have to be committed. They don't have to be faithful. They're not totally unresponsive to Christianity, but neither are they excited in their relationship to Elohim. The church of Laodicea was that way. Yeshua told them they were neither cold nor hot. One might say they were too good to go to hell, but not bad enough to go to hell. I mean, not, um, well, but too bad to go to heaven. Okay? Too good to go to hell, but, but too bad to go to heaven. The Laodiceans were, in spiritual things, cold comparatively. They were, not, they were not as cold as people of the world or people who had nothing to do with Yahweh. But, at the same time, they were not as hot as those who truly belonged to Yahweh. Or, 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 you know, they were not opposed to Him. But, at the same time, they were ap apathetic towards Him. Amen? These people, the, the seasons, took the middle road approach towards living for Yahweh. They had an apathetic attitude when it came to standing up for Yeshua. Now, I want you guys to all put your eyes on Brother Mark here. And Mark will show us an example of what it, how someone should stand up for Yeshua. I stand for Yeshua. All right, very good. Good, very good, very good. Now, let us all turn our eyes to Brother Lloyd over here who will show us what it means to be apathetic towards standing for Yeshua. All right. Very, very good. Sister Sister Danielle, what, what would you say is the difference between these two examples of standing for Yeshua? Yes. Enthusiasm. Good definition here. Good definition. You see, the person, Brother Lloyd, in his example, he, it's not that he didn't stand for Yeshua. It's the way he went about it. He didn't, you know, it's his attitude as he went about it. You know, it it just kind of like, you know, well, I'll stand for Yeshua. Brother Mark was straight up, proud, loud. All, his all was into it. You know? That's the difference. Now, as we look, we would see that Yahweh would rather that we would be opposed to Him than to be formal, apathetic professors of Him. Is that what, not what He says in His Word? The people of Laodicea like I told you before, they took the apathetic road. Now, Yeshua told them that if they were lukewarm, warm, showing or having little enthusiasm, interest, support, or conviction, he told he told them also that he would spew them out of their mouth. How many people know that there's a lot of people in the church today like this? Raise your hand. Okay, that's true. They come to church, and and they have, and they um, they say to themselves things like, um, "Well, I don't, you know, I don't really want to sing like I should. I don't feel like singing. You know, I know Yahweh's real, but I don't maybe feel like I really want to worship." How many people know, have no people like that, or ever been people like that? Amen. They show or have little enthusiasm. Little interest, little support, or conviction. They they come to worship, and, they, and you look at them; they don't even really worship, you know, with all their heart and mind and soul. They come to church, but they aren't they aren't even interested in the programs, the Bible studies, or the projects that the church is going on. Anybody know that people like this? They come to church, but they give little or no respect in the finances of the church through tithes and offerings or in other ways they are middle of the road Christians they are not completely out but they are not completely in hallelujah Yeshua told the church of Laodicea like I said he, he, because they were neither hot nor cold he would spew them out this all means that, you, that a, a lukewarm Christian is offensive to Yahweh. Sister Denise, let me ask you a question. 
when you ask one of our children or myself to do something and we have a apathetic as brother Lloyd demonstrated way of doing it even though we're going to do it but we have an attitude how, well, how does that make you feel what does that make you feel like doing uh-huh. yeah it makes you feel like well I'd rather you not do it at all you know and everything this is how Yahweh feels you know this is what he feels when we are apathetic halfway and not really into what he would ask us to do let's take for example the idea of a person who how many here know that the welfare system is supported by our taxpayer dollars by those who are working hard and stuff like that and you know we are paying taxes to help the welfare system the welfare system is meant for those who are having a hard time and can't stand on their own to give, to give them some support until they can stand on their own or if they can't to support those who just totally cannot for maybe for mental or physical they need assistance you know that's a good thing right but take the idea of a person who draws welfare money from the government is able to work as much as you or I alright if they draw their check they get all the benefits all the doctor bills and hospital bills are paid for they get free groceries but they just lay back and enjoy it and they don't ever ever try to stand on their own feet how does that make you feel does that, is that offensive to you it should be if the, if the idea is not offensive maybe we should check ourselves if the, you know because a lot of times how we approach earthly physical things is the same approach we give to spiritual things of Yahweh if you if you're okay with just sitting back yourself or the idea of others sitting back and just taking advantage of the system and, and you know not you know being being in the system part way but not doing totally what the system is really requires of us and just taking advantage of the goodness of the system but you know in a selfish manner or way then you're probably okay with doing the same thing with the things of Yahweh right amen so let, let's look at something else another example let's say if you're working on your job and and uh, you're working hard every day you give your full eight hours you deserve every dollar you make but there's this good old boy who is employed with you and he goofs off he shuns his work he is passive concerning his job he sits down all day long and watches you work but at the end of the week he gets a page the same paycheck for the same amount as you do would you be offended by his actions mm-hmm so is Yahweh when we are neither hot nor cold amen see Yahweh has offered us his all has he not on Calvary and is offering us his all every single day and in return he expects nothing less from us but our all amen no, he's, he's worthy he deserves nothing less but our all we sing the song is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid your heart does the spirit control is it ask yourself amen concerning that good old boy on, on a job working with you you would rather you know he stop goofing off and that he get to work right either that or you would rather he quit and let someone else have his job right well that's the same way Father Yahweh feels he feels the same way he says I will spew you out of my mouth now that's a hard saying some might say right hmm you know we look at 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 at, at the, the church and how it should be and when it comes to serving Yahweh and I want to do a little, little little exercise with you guys I'm gonna say when it comes to serving Yahweh and I want you guys to say together to repeat the last word I say okay you guys ready you are right when it comes to serving Yahweh he wants you to be fervent, fervent. Eager. eager enthusiastic, enthusiastic. Passionate. passionate zealous, zealous. fanatical Nine. impassioned Nine. burning Nine. intense Give yourself a clap. Give yourself a clap. Hallelujah. In church, that's what we want to be. 
We want to be fanatical in our praises. We want to be intense in our worship. We want to we want to be fervent for the word of Yahweh. Right? Hallelujah. But there's too many people sitting in the church today that are not. They're sitting on a fence. They're not sure which way they want to go. Amen. There are too many people taking the middle road in their relationship with Father Yahweh. They don't want to be completely out of the church because their conscience would bother them. They don't want to quit going to services once in a while or they will lose their active membership. They don't want to backslide because they don't want to go to hell. So they take the middle road. They say things like, um, like, um, I don't want to become too active because it would take too much out of me. You know? It would take too much of my time or it would require too much of my time and my efforts. They say things like, um, it might cost me something. There might be something I might have to lose, such as my sinful habits. Or I might have to turn loose of things that I want to do. So I'm going to take the middle road approach. We don't want to be enthusiastic because it would mean that we have to have commitment. We don't want to be supportive because it would mean that we have to give of ourselves. We don't want to worship because it would mean we would have to dedicate ourselves. So we take the middle road. Is that not right? Hopefully that's not some of us in here. From the oldest to the youngest. I'm speaking to myself also. Not just to you guys. Amen? Folks, I know this message is a little bit hard, a little bit harsh. But do you want me to tell you the truth or do you want me to tell you all the nice smelling things and the good things? Huh? The truth. And the truth is good, right? Hallelujah. I'm trying to put a fire underneath of us today. Whether we, we agree or not, we need to know that the truth is Yahweh is sick of people walking the middle road. You know what? People who do not become excited about Him, there's something wrong with that. Don't you think? Yahweh hates apathy. Yahweh hates lethargy and indifference. He didn't call us to sit down and do nothing. If Yahweh truly saved you and brought you out of the pit of miry sin, then He deserves from you and I to be grateful, grateful enough to work fervently for Him. Is that not true? He deserves the best that we can give Him at all times. He deserves our all when it comes to inside the church, praising Him and worship, and outside the church. Living our life, whether it's on our jobs, as parents, as, you know, as students, as, as people, and with our friends. He deserves us all. Now, if this message makes you uncomfortable or mad, maybe it's because you're one of those who are, um, I don't know, walking the middle road. But there's no ex excuse. No excuse, whatever, for an able-bodied Christian to sit on the seat and do nothing. There's no excuse for a believer to show no or little enthusiasm, interest, support, or conviction. Brothers and sisters, it's time we get in it's time we become enthused. It's time we get hot for Yahweh. It's time we become passionate about our relationship with Elohim. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want Yahweh to spew me out. Raise your hand if you don't want Yahweh to spew you out. No. Yahweh warned the church of Laodicea. He warned them that he would do exactly that. And the image is intense. It's strong. It denotes a deep disgust. A loathing at the indifference which prevailed in the church of Laodicea. The idea is that they would be utterly rejected and cast off as a church. Hmm. Listen, church. Listen to me. I'm, I'm going to do another exercise with you guys. All right? Repeat after me. The church cannot reach its full potential... With a lukewarm 
Congregation. Congregation. Say that all together. If we have only a small interest in the church, the church cannot go forward as it should. Do you remember the church on the day of Pentecost? you remember how things went then? They were fervent. They were zealous. They were impassioned, intense, and on fire. Peter stood up and preached a simple little message. It's straightforward. 3,000 people were saved. You know? Then the gifts of the Spirit were, 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 were added so that they can work out, you know, the, the good news, the gospel with efficiency. Hallelujah to the church. And more and more people were added every day and were saved to the church daily. Miracles, everything. The people were lifted up. They were edified and strengthened. Amen? Here, I want someone to turn to uh, 1 Corinthians 12. 28 and read that let's all turn there and someone read that nice and loud enthusiastically for me Okay, go up to 14, uh, uh, 12. Read chapter 14, verse 12, and read also, please. So also you who are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel, right, to the edifying of the church. Does that, does that sound like somebody who's taking a middle road, lethargic, just doing the bare necessities? Right? No, that, that sounds like someone who's given their all, who's striving for excellence. It says excel. That's excellence. Amen? I may not be able to obtain perfection. Only Yahweh is perfect. And he can, and he can help me there. But, but I can obtain excellence in Him. And where I fall short, I can pray to Him and He can make up the rest for me. And help me to continue to grow. Right? Right? Amen. Let me... Let me, I want to take this word that we call um, the middle of the road and I want to sh show a different aspect about it. The middle of the road can also mean taking a neutral approach to the standards of Yahweh and, and of His word. You know, there is no middle of the road when it comes to the standards or the principles of Yahweh, is there? Either we stand up for Yahweh's word or we do not. To many take the middle road concerning the issues that we that face us today. We don't want to be considered uncool or weird or old-fashioned or out of date, so we take the middle road. We don't want to be called fanatical or extreme, so we take the middle road. The road of little commitment, little liability, little responsibility. When a Christian doesn't stand up for what he or she believes in, he or she will lose their testimony. How many know that to be true? Hallelujah. To, to, as we begin to close, I want to, to, to read an old hymn written by a man named George Duffield. It says this. Stand up. Stand up for Yahshua, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead, till every foe is vanquished, and Messiah our Lord indeed. The last verse says, Stand up, stand up for Yahshua, and strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next, the victor's song. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Amen? Amen? We need to stand up. We need to be intense. One more exercise. You ready? I want you to listen carefully to what I say next. I'm going to say, and, I, and at the end of it, I want you to say yes or no. Only yes or no. All right? 
this, we're going we're gonna to kind of like Simon says, we're going to see how well you guys pay attention, how intensely you pay attention. Ready? Are you going to stand up for Yeshua or are you going to st- take the middle road? Supposed to say yes or no. Uh oh, we're messing up what's happening here. Someone's not listening intently. All right. <laughs> Well, all right. Well, I'm gonna say a statement. When I say when I say when I'm done with the statement, you'll know because I'll go like this. Say yes or no, okay? All right. Now, are you going to be one of those who aren't enthusiastic about Yahweh? Are you going to be one of those who have little interest in the things of Yahweh? Are you going to be one of those who have little or no support for the church? No. Good. Give yourself a clap. Everyone said no. Everyone paid attention. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. You don't have to be lukewarm. You can't repent if you have been. You can turn around. You can make a fresh start. Yahweh bless you.